said. Great, thanks. And uh, Michael set us up pretty well thinking about these airborne particulates and then how do you get rid of them is to wear a mask. And so if we think back to the fall, we didn't have many of these masks. And so the kind of purpose of this study was to understand you know, the viability of reusing uh, masks. So this is uh, our group at uh, ASU, both in engineering and chemistry. So I'm gonna actually start with the broader impacts because I think as all of us have kind of alluded to, it's pretty easy to understand them over the last uh, year or so. And really what this project allowed us to do is to have some core capabilities and flexibility to help people. So we were able to kind of aerosolize particles uh, in a nebulizer, and then we could put in different mask materials kind of right in this interface. And we could measure particle size distributions in the air kind of before and after this mask to understand the efficiency of different masks. We think back to the spring, there were lots of people, you know, saying, what about using used t-shirts and other things as mask materials? So our team have really helped a lot of different groups locally kind of understand the viability of cloth masks and other things. Uh, really cool, our team was able to provide data for the uh, student team at ASU, which actually won the X Prize competition for the next generation mask. They won half a million dollars. Uh, and so they were able to use data from you know, Pierre's lab in terms of looking at this filtration efficiency during their pitch to show that their masks actually functioned. So congratulations to that team. Also, what we were looking at was how to help first responders. So these first responders back in the spring didn't have enough masks or other PPE. They didn't want to treat them with chemicals because it's hot in Arizona. They didn't want to put wet masks on them. They really had a, wanted to be able to treat them in between break sessions uh, at, in this case, um, a firehouse. So after several iterations, we came up with the design that these firemen are showing here that they actually deployed and used to uh, you know, disinfect their masks. And so there were UV lights on the top and bottom, kind of a grill in the middle, kind of like a barbecue. And within about 30 seconds to one minute, they could disinfect their masks and reuse them again. So we did, of course, more scientific, you know, studies here as well in terms of answering the basic question, not only can you reuse masks, but do applying UV light, kind of a non-chemical way to use these masks, uh, damage the polymers that are responsible for removing these airborne viruses. So we looked at both lo low pressure lamps and LEDs. It actually turned out in the spring and summer, it was really difficult to purchase some of these. And so there was a real rush on this. So we did look at focusing on these uh, UV lamps. Here's an example. We were able to disinfect, you know, these masks using one joule per square centimeter. So you know, obviously about 10 times higher than we really needed. Then we went all the way up to 10 joules per square centimeter that would show multiple recycling efforts. And essentially in all cases, we were able to remove greater than 95% of these airborne particles. So clearly UV light, you know, can be used to treat these masks. We went deeper into understanding the polymer chemistry of these masks. There are multiple layers. We looked at irradiating each layer at pretty high UV doses really looked at the fundamental chemistry and showed that the UV light really would not change the chemistry of these fibers. These are not small pores that remove particles by size exclusion. They're pretty big because you have to be able to push your air through them. And so it actually becomes the electrostatic uh, interactions. Uh, we're able to, you know, kind of continue this, look at different types of masks as well. Um, Finally, I want to say, you know, kind of where are we going to kind of keep us on time here, but we're interested in particles in air that have different charge and masks that have different charges. So it turns out that when you look at these masks, again, you move air through them, so they're fairly porous, but it's a charge on the mask. And so we've been measuring the electrostatic charge of these mask materials to see how they interact with positively or negatively charged particles in the air. And this to give you some idea of the relative importance of the charge on the membranes in these filters. Uh, this red looks at you know, very high removal efficiency of masks that uh, as you purchase them and even after reuse, but if you remove the charge, you get really you know, only about half the treatment efficiency. So the methods that you use to you know, make the masks, but also to clean and recycle the masks are really important. And it turned out that UV light did not you know, impair this electrostatic performance. 
Here I focus mostly on the mass, but we did a lot of work on, you know, light emitting diodes in the disinfection range, helping various startup companies bring uh, products to market fairly quickly by looking at disinfection on surfaces as well. And again, we have publications kind of in process, but it was really kind of the fun part in our group to get the students in our labs kind of engaged in solving kind of a real world problem. We actually created a lot of good, you know, synergy amongst our research students doing this work because it could really be used and helpful uh, to the broader public. So with that, I'd like to thank NSF for their funding.